Old enemies agree to new talks over the Western Sahara, but already the two sides in this divide are hardening their positions. What lies ahead then for this desert land and its people? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Sami Zaydan. It hasn't happened for seven years. Prompted by a UN resolution on Monday, Morocco and the Polisario Front have agreed to meet. There's no set date yet, and the parties remain at odds on some core issues. Morocco supports limited autonomy. The Polisario, on the other hand, wants native Western Saharans, the Sahrawis, to vote on independence. Well, the divisions go deep. As the Polisario's UN representative started voicing his concerns about this at a press conference, he was mysteriously faded out on UN TV. The Moroccan proposal is entirely consistent with self-determination. Do you, do you agree or disagree with that and why? I cannot. Well, it was an action some people suspected might have been intentional. That, of course, is still being looked into. Well, in any case, the controversy just goes to show that the divide does indeed run deep. Well, let's take a background look now at the issue. The Sahara is bordered by Algeria, Mauritania and Morocco. It is mainly desert, but it is suspected viable oil fields are in the disputed waters. As Lucy Ashton reports, the fight over this Western African state goes back to colonial times. It's a land in limbo. It might not look like much, but for hundreds of thousands of Sahrawis, this is their national homeland. The United Nations calls the Western Sahara the last non-independent state in Africa, and Morocco says the former Spanish colony is part of its territory. Back when these soldiers were young men and independence from Spain was near, the Moroccan king ordered his people to march into the territory next door. They settled, occupying two-thirds of the state while Mauritania took control of the rest. Within months, in 1976, a guerrilla war erupted. An independence movement named the Polisario Front fought back, forcing Mauritania to withdraw. Morocco hung on, beating the Polisario back behind this line. 30 years later, it's now heavily mined and barricaded. A ceasefire exists, but peace remains a long way away. Meanwhile, thousands of refugees are stranded, either in Algeria or on the wrong side of the barricade. Allegations of human rights abuses are being leveled at all sides, and there are warnings that the longer this conflict goes on, the more embittered these people will become. Well, our guests today are Ambassador Youssef Amrani, the Director General of the Moroccan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He joins us from Athens, where he's traveling on business. Sidi Omar, the UK representative of the Polisario Front. He joins us from Leeds. And in London, Toby Shelley, a journalist and the author of a book about the Western Sahara dispute. Thanks for joining us, all of you gentlemen. Let's start with Ambassador Amrani. Uh, first of all, any progress on deciding when and where the two parties may resume talks? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, I would like to say today that uh, Morocco is ready to respond to the appeal of the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations to, uh, 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 to, set up, to set up these negotiations under its auspices. But Morocco did not wait until the, uh, the resolution of the Security Council. Morocco, since uh, more than one year, has been working steadily in order to respond to the appeal of the Security Council when he requested all the uh, parties to overcome the impasse and okay, to well, progress ha have towards... You, have you reached an agreement on when and where you might be actually resuming those talks? No, the talks, uh, we are waiting for the Secretary General to, to, to address this issue. Okay, uh, let but me Morocco put the, already is let, Let's move on to the question then of at what point talks may resume. Uh, is everything really open to negotiation from the Moroccan perspective, or are you only willing to negotiate on the principle of limited autonomy for the Western Sahara? Well, uh, let me uh, first tell you that Morocco has a concrete proposal. A proposal that uh, uh, has been prepared since a long time, which was, which is, uh, which uh, uh, according to a demarche, which is participatory, with the participation of all the people concerned, 
the political parties in Morocco, the Caucasus, which is a very important uh, uh, Sahrawi institution, which is the advisory council for Saharan affairs, which is composed by all the tribes of the Sahara, which are the majority of the people of the Sahara. And we have a project which is serious, which is democratic, and which is uh, which is in conformity with interna international legality and especially the, uh, princip the principle of self-determination. As you know, uh, our demarche is open. It, it, since the beginning, it was open for negotiations, open for everybody who wants to bring its input to this demarche. Since the beginning, Morocco had an open demarche. Does that include the principle today, then of a referendum on independence? Would, be, would that be something you'd be willing to discuss? No, uh, listen to me, please. Uh, the, the issue of referendum, we have been trying this for the last 20 years, and we have failed. Many people were in charge. Now, the Security Council asked to overcome the impasse, to bring something new. And this is where the Morocco came with this, with this initiative, which is democratic and which provides uh, uh, for all the, 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 the freedom in the region, so, so people can really manage themselves. And we are happy today. Morocco is satisfied, is happy, that the Security Council has welcomed the seriousness and the credible efforts of Morocco to overcome this impasse. All right, let's uh, get the view then from Sidi Omar. Uh, listening there to uh, what uh, the ambassador was saying, uh, very clearly insisting that the starting point is the Moroccan proposal. As we know, the Moroccan proposal does not include any mention of a referendum on independence. Is that an agreeable starting point from your point of view? No, it's not. And let me just recall that the latest Security Council Resolution 1755 called upon the parties to enter into negotiations without preconditions in good faith with a view to reaching a just, lasting and a mutually polit political solution that will provide for the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara. So these negotiations should be conducted without any preconditions. But the only precondition implied in the text of the resolution is actually a solution that will provide for the right of the Sahara people to self-determination. That's the precondition of any talks to be held by, uh, between the parties. But that is a point which, which uh, could be argued in a number of ways. Um, how are you interpreting, perhaps we'll, we'll take a step back for a moment and read that clause from the Security Council resolution and what it says. Uh, this, of course, is Security Council, Council Resolution 1754, which uh, has been issued recently. Uh, in it, it says, The Security Council calls upon the parties to enter into negotiations which will provide for the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara. Now, from the Polisario's point of view, the uh, self-determination of the people of Western Sahara could be autonomy, could be independence. How are you interpreting that? That's right, because the Polisario position is aligned with the United Nations doctrine relating to self-determination. Resolution uh, 1541 sets out actually the principles governing this uh, kind of exercise of uh, right to self-determination, determining that the outcomes of any exercise, genuine exercise of the right to self-determination by a colonial people should lead to independence, free association or integration. So, in, but the fundamental condition is that the will of the people concerned should be expressed in a free and democratic manner. That's our uh, demand, and that's what the nation is demanding. Now, to start a negotiation with their already established offer, which is the Moroccan offer, is actually is a non-starter. So what will you then, what have you agreed to start discussing then with the Moroccan uh, 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 side? We have always been open to discussion with the Moroccan side. It's actually it was thanks to our willingness to engage in, in talks that the United Nations was able in 1991 to come up with a settlement plan. But well, they want to discuss, sorry to interrupt you, but they want to discuss autonomy and you're insisting that, it sounds to me like both sides have preconditions, your precondition is uh, full independence. No, we, we are not saying full independence or full integration. We are simply saying that the last word should be given to the Sahrawi people to decide their inalienable right to self-determination. This is what the United Nations is, is saying. Now, to offer the Sahrawis only one option, as the Moroccans are trying to do, is undemocratic. All right, we're going to come. Uh, we're going to go over in a minute. We will we'll, we'll well. take that point to Ambassador yeah. Yusuf Amrani. But uh, before we do that, I want to bring Toby Shelley into the discussion. There, how serious a breakthrough do we have? Listening to what we're listening from both sides. 
Well, I'm afraid I'm rather sceptical about this. I mean, firstly, the parties have spoken in the past. We mustn't forget, we mustn't forget that. And uh, uh, despite apparent breakthroughs, nothing, nothing has ever happened. There have been two fundamental reasons for that. One has been that the Security Council, whilst it's been very good at uh, coming up with initiatives, has then uh, lost the enthusiasm to uh, continue them when they've run into sand. So the first precondition for success is that the Security Council really means to, uh, to, to go through with things that this time rather than just let them drift. The second issue is one that, uh, Sammy, that, that you have mentioned and that's come up uh, in the comments of uh, the other two contributors, and that is this issue of um, the right of self-determination uh, self and the exercise of that right. Now, Morocco has in the past, the distant past, agreed to the uh, notion that, uh, which uh, is enshrined, as I understand it, in international law, that self-determination requires a choice by the people concerned, and that choice must be a real choice between integration or independence. Now, Morocco has been criticised, not least by the um, previous Secretary General of, of the United Nations, of trying to uh, foist on the international community a process whereby uh, the Sahrawis would be asked to rubber stamp an agreement that was uh, made in a closed room between uh, uh, negotiators of the two sides, rather than freely exercise the basic and fundamental choice, do they wish to be Moroccan citizens or do they wish to be uh, members of, of uh, citizens of an independent All right, state or do take they that wish point. for autonomy? Sorry to interrupt you, let's take that point to Ambassador uh, Yusuf Amrani. Do you think at any point in the process, whether the talks, that Morocco might uh, accept and agree to have some kind of vote on that key question? Do people want to stay part, as part of Morocco or break away? Is that something <laughs> that you can see at any stage in the talks? Yeah, uh, Excuse me, let me say first three points. The first point, resolution of Security Council 1754. First of all, welcome serious and credible Moroccan efforts to move the process forward. This is the first a recognition of the efforts by Morocco, by the Security Council. Two, calls upon the parties, and I read and I quote the resolution, to enter into negotiations, take it with good faith, and taken into consideration the developments of the last months. This is a, this is a resolution of Security Council. Right. And the but, development but of the last months. But just to try and get to that key point, sir, sorry to interrupt you, but if you could just answer that key question of whether at any point me, do you answer. understand that uh, let me, you will allow to, some to kind of that. vote on, on a referendum? No, the Moroccan proposal since the beginning was a proposal for negotiation. It was an open demarche. And the result of these negotiations will be, of course, submitted to vote. This was since the beginning in the Moroccan proposal. Third, let me finish with the third point. Also, the initiative, the Moroccan initiative, is not in contradiction with the principle of determination because it is a fruit, it is the outcome of a process of consultation and negotiations. And, of course, the autonomy is in, 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 conf in, con in conformity with the spirit, with the, the letter, and of the Charter of the UN, and also of the practice of the UN. So we don't see any contradiction. Of course, Morocco is committed, Morocco is working, and we will propose a solution to overcome the impasse. This is our position. And, we, and as I said later, okay. it is an open demarche. All right, so clearly the two sides to the conflict may have agreed to resume talks, but there are other interested parties in the conflict in Western Sahara. When we return, we'll take a look at the evolving role of international players in this dispute. Stay with us. <laughs>